All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Pigeonhole Motorcycle Podcast. I am fortunate enough today to have Daryl Villanueva. See, I did it right. Uh, Band at nine. So what's shaking in Vietnam today? Uh, Same old, same old, I guess. Um, It's freaking hot down here, as usual. I kind of miss the cold. (laughs) I wish I could. I wish I could say the same. (laughs) Oh, yeah. What is it over there right now? Hey, we finally got snow here in Chicago, but it's, you know, it's a mild winter here. So Is that like, late? Uh, yeah, it's we January. just didn't. Yeah, it snowed on Halloween here, and we didn't get another snow till like a week ago. So, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. I, what, what's the um, coldest it gets there? Oh, God. Well, last year, uh, we were like minus 15, minus 20. Yeah, uh, that's Fahrenheit, right? Yep. Jeez. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You, but, you, you know what? Yeah, we all need to move somewhere warm. So okay. let's jump right in here, Daryl. I want to, sure, first man. of all, um, I've been a huge admirer of your work um, through Instagram. If you're, if you're looking for Daryl's work on Instagram, you can find it uh, at Bandit9. Um, yeah. So give me a little, give me a little background. How did, you get, how did you get into this whole mess? Uh, that's a good question, man. Um, I don't even know where to begin, dude. To be <laughs> with you. Um, I, used to work in a, I used to work in advertising. Okay, so I did that when I was like 18. And I did that for about 10 years. So, um, wow, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> so I, adver- I how, how old were you yeah. when you got into advertising? I was 18. I, I have no mechanical or motorcycle background, to be honest with you guys. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what's this called? I did advertising. I was an art director there for about 10 years. Okay. I worked in Los Angeles for a little bit. I was in Dubai for a little bit. I worked in Vietnam for a year. And then I went to Beijing. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my life's a bit nuts, but uh, <laughs> it's good fun. But um, what's this guy? Uh, I, did, um, I did that for eight, 10 years. And I got sick of it, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, it was really fun in the beginning. You know, uh, I got to play with. Uh, photographers, directors, writers, all sorts of creative people. Uh, and I picked up a lot of useful skills, let's put it that okay. way, and really useful connections. Um, but it's a, I don't know if most people know this, but it's a pretty demanding job. Mm-hmm. As in, you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Um, and it's cool when you're young, but as you well, as I climbed up the ladder, it was getting harder and harder to get my guys to, you know, stay over the weekends, sacrifice holidays with family, you know, anniversaries with their wives' birthdays, children's birthdays. It was getting much, much harder. And, and you're you and you're the guy that had to ask them to give up that time. Yeah, pretty much. You know, yeah, imagine, that sucks. Yeah, imagine telling people, you know, I'm sorry, but you can't go home for New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because no, you, you have to work on this detergent you know what i mean and right. and the work was not um wonderful 99 percent of the time so it it, it was really it, really awful uh so yeah i eventually did uh this motorcycle thing yeah so uh obviously you're a creative guy being in advertising and all that stuff so how do you, how do you make the transition from saying all right you had a nice stable job and say, okay, I'm dropping this and doing something else. Yeah, it was um, really quite comfortable, to be honest. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, I was, I was quite fortunate. Um, I was uh, what they would call an expat. Uh, so we got uh, the expat package, is what they'd call it, where okay. you know you get your salary, you get your entire salary. They'll take care of your housing, your transportation. Uh, trips home, <laughs> things like that. So it was it was pretty good, and it was a really tough decision. But wow. the game plan is, or at least the game plan at the time, was to save as much money as I could. Okay. Um, so I hatched the plan about a year and a half before I actually quit. You know, and so I saved as much as I could, and prepared for an entire year of failure. <laughs> an entire year of failure it's a good plan um, yeah and uh fortunately um i didn't need it you know um luckily i didn't need it so right. that's that's how all of this started and I, i'm not one of those guys that 
take risks. I, I take calculated risks, but okay. you know, you know, I'm not like I don't know Steve Jobs that just you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not like that. <laughs> well, it seems like the the style of motorcycle that you make mm -hmm. these these futuristic um, looking bikes that there's a risk in that. There is a risk in that. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was oh, good, that's... brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't know what I was thinking. It's the 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 stuff that I do is very very polarizing, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of tough sometimes uh, because there's a lot of chatter, you know, online, and. <laughs> The guys that speak the most are usually the the negative negatives. Type. Yep. Yeah, and so you got to use those as motivation to keep going. I think. Yeah, I should I should figure out a way how to do that. <laughs> it it <laughs> is hard to take negative comments and turn them positive for you to, to. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind criticism, as in like, hey, why don't you try this, or what if it was more like that? But it's mm -hmm. it's more like, you know, pass or ew or meh. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's you funny know. how one word can get under your skin, even a word like meh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the worst kind. So I, I'm really open to criticism, and um, I actually would love to hear uh, feedback from guys like Craig. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, or Max, even Bobby right. as well. Um, you know, I'm always open to that. But yeah, the negative comments just. Ugh. Well, if if you if you want to talk to somebody that does really well with that, you should talk to Craig Rodsmith because oh, yeah. you know every every comment from that's never going to work to you know what are you thinking or just the stupidest comments ever. Um, somehow he's, he's found a way to just eh okay okay you're he gets right. It as well. Oh yeah, man. Especially when the the first couple builds are are anything just stupid stupid comments. I, I think it's. But you know what? I think it's good motivation that no one's... You guys are out there doing stuff. You, Max, Craig, a bunch of other guys and, and gals that, you know, mm -hmm. who cares? The, it, the guys that aren't doing anything different aren't going anywhere. Yeah, it's just, um, what's this called? It, what's tough is I try to get my guys not to look at that stuff because right. they get motivated. So that's, you know, hard to control. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, anytime um, you do something as, as radically different as you are, you're going to obviously have those people. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I'm still not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go write bad comments on all your stuff today just to, yeah. ru to ruin your evening. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> what know, the hell is uh, this? I, I, actually, sometimes I, I, I get asked to respond to these guys, you know, make set things, uh, set things clear. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I go down that rabbit hole, I'm not gonna stop <laughs> so I, I have this discipline where, you know just don't touch it right maybe thank you for your input <laughs> and, yeah. it's, it's, it's it's right it's better than go fuck yourself at the same time <laughs> oh my god i really want to say things like that sometimes but it's just wow it i, I always fun. want i want the last word <laughs> right now what is so tell me about like now now that from where you're at uh what is your like daily routine uh, of things that you do oh yeah so um right now okay how would i put this i'm into these i hate this genre but it's called self-help <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> self-help books okay <laughs> and I, I read a lot of interesting things from like Tim Ferriss to Oprah <laughs> mm -hmm. right okay and, I, and I'm trying to like uh, mimic what they do during the day as well so I get up in the morning uh, pretty early uh, probably the latest about eight o'clock um, and I have this whole routine where you know I take time to meditate a little bit <laughs> mm -hmm. compose myself right clear um, your mind a little bit yeah clear my mind and um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this uh, Five minute journals. Do any of the other guys do this? No, I, I I've I've read about it, but I've yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So you, it, it, it's really simple stuff that uh, kind of trap your monkey brain down on paper, you know, mm -hmm. so that uh, when it's time to get to work, it's just that's all you're focused on. Um, so yeah, so by about let's say nine thirty, I'm already you know, 
hitting the keyboard, responding to emails and things like that. Um, uh, making sure that guys at the workshop need uh, have everything that they need. You know? So, but I'm pretty much done by about six or seven o'clock. You know, so okay. I can spend time with, with the wife and things like that. Um, but that's pretty much my day. Wow. So are you, are you hands on every single day in the, in the, in the shop? I wish I could be, but unfortunately <laughs> I, I have to take a step back. Um, so I've got two guys that I really trust to handle uh, that side of the business for me. So my head mechanic is actually my secret weapon. You know, he's the real genius behind Bandit 9, not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very and, kind uh, of you to say. No, no, no. He, he really is a genius. Um, and I wish, you know, because of language barriers, um, I kind of have to represent the company a little bit. Okay. Um, but I would like him to take, you know, most of the credit, you know, I, I do it as much as possible. So whenever we have launch events, for example, with Royal Enfield, I'll usually push him into the limelight. Oh, good. Yeah. Now, what language barriers? What language does he speak? What's his uh, first language? Viet Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Okay. I actually don't speak very well. So <laughs> I actually, sorry. Let me scratch. Let me do that again. I don't speak at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that teeters on the line of well, <laughs> not at all or well, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I saw there. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've got, uh, he speaks well, uh, English well enough so that we can communicate. And, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, and the work work looks fantastic. And like you said, he's a, he's a genius at what he does. He really is. He really is. So I, I'm not a 3D model dude either, you know, so what I can do is... Um, profile shots uh, of the motorcycle so that's how most of the concepts are done and I'll brief him that way you know just from a 2d uh, sketch even and somehow we'll find a way to make it you know into reality mm -hmm. so um, with with how you start first of all where does the where does the name bandit 9 come from sure um, okay I did this in 2000 what the hell 11 <laughs> okay <laughs> time flies man it's hard yeah. it's hard to think back and you're okay. a young guy so you're not supposed to be forgetting uh, this stuff yet I, I, i'm getting there <laughs> <laughs> i i know i where did the name band nine come from okay to be honest with you it it's has many roots okay so okay. the the first one comes from my old office where we used to fly a pirate flag Okay, um, and the thinking behind that is that pirates, bandits, and outlaws are one of the most creative people uh, ever. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they don't have much, um, but they come up with really innovative solutions to their problems. You know, just just watch Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> right, <laughs> very you interesting I mean? ways to come up with their problems. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and and it's. The same situation that we have here um, in Asia, we don't have a lot of uh, parts. We don't we don't have access to a lot of that. We don't even have access to a lot of talent uh, hmm. or expertise in this field. So we have to make the most of what we've got. You know, okay. so that, that that's where the name comes from. In two thousand nine, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the nine refers to two thousand nine, where I, I first started riding a motorcycle. So I'm a late bloomer. That was. When I was twenty-five, wow, wow, and that's a so your love of of motorcycles um, of these concept things did what came uh, riding them or designing them first? Uh, my love for motorcycles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, my love for motorcycles came from even before I started riding. I okay. always really wanted a motorcycle, and my mm -hmm. mom would never in a million years let that happen <laughs> Asian parents <laughs> right. sounds like my mother <laughs> um, yeah uh, something about them I, I remember the sound the way they look the way they cut through the streets I mean these guys are just freaking cool I, I remember thinking that when I was young um, so that's really where I started falling in love with it until eventually when I was 25 and you know I'm not at home <laughs> I was living in Saigon and the motorcycle here is a way of life. That's when I 
really first hopped on a motorcycle or a scooter, whatever you want to call it, um, which is the Honda Cub, a 50cc bike. Um, and yeah, man, I remember meeting this guy at the back of a mall <laughs> really, really late at night. It's pretty shady. Yeah, I was going to say, this sounds like a very sketchy story to start with here. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty shady, man. And I bought the bike for like 200 bucks, something like that, maybe 150 bucks. And it was really a simple exchange. And somehow the, this is, I've never ridden a motorcycle before. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I was, I, I, somehow it felt really natural to me. Um, and as most people would know that the Honda Cub is a semi-automatic bike, so there's no clutch, you just click through. Um, but even when I transitioned two weeks later, I already upgraded two weeks later because I was uh, freaking out. <laughs> you alone. got the itch, right. got <laughs> <laughs> the itch. You know, I, I eventually upgraded to uh, Honda Super Sport, which is a manual motorcycle. It's about, I think it was 90 cc's. And um, yeah, I remember being in the car just you know, visualizing how I was going to hold in the clutch, you know, change the gears. And that too came naturally to me somehow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how it all really started. Wow. So now when you started your, when you started your business, you, you started in Saigon? I did not. I was okay. in Beijing actually. So okay. I was um, handling my advertising job. Uh, during the day and whenever I had free time which was never <laughs> uh, I tackle I tackle band at nine in my spare time yeah so when you move over there what what was it like to um, start a company there in Saigon yeah uh, okay the formal process is long okay uh, Vietnamese government love their paperwork <laughs> Okay, so it's oh, really? like stacks and stacks. So it maybe took me about six months to get it going. Um, but I had started designing the first piece already. Um, fortunately, well, yeah, really fortunately. And I picked this up from a book called um, The Lean Startup, where the idea is um, try to prototype um, without spending too much cash. <laughs> you know? Okay. So, right. What I did was created a mock-up. Um, I set up a website, and I put my very first design of the Eve, uh, just a Photoshop file, you know, uh, of the Eve online. And surprisingly, what the hell, uncrate.com picked it up, huh? and it went nuts. So I got 150 emails overnight. It, Holy it, it, shit! Yeah, yeah, it, it was really insane. Um, so when I said that I didn't need to, you know, prepare for the worst for you know, one year of failure. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I really, really did not need it. So <laughs> I, I got lucky, you know, very, very fortunate. Well, and I think that has a lot to do with your work, though, brother, at the same time. Uh, you made yourself fortunate. Sometimes we make ourselves fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been really, really lucky, to be honest with you. I mean, if you see our work, it's not for everyone. But you know, somehow we're still alive. What is, what is the, you just, you just struck something in my mind. What is the quote sure. that you guys have on your, your website? Um, uh, future and reality, um, and time. Um, oh, oh, right. Um, I love it. I, I was, re I read it yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Uh, what was it? Uh, it's something where future, future, uh, future and reality oh, right. meet. Um, it, it's some, um, yeah. I, it, that was an interview as well, so I, I can't remember now who asked me that. But it was it was like, your it was your quote, and you can't remember it. How do you predict the future? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was asked how, how do you predict the future, and I think I said something along the lines of, um, like it, it's only a matter of time um, mm -hmm. before it becomes a reality. Uh, like you build it, you know, uh, you don't predict the future, you build it. Is that what you're talking about? I, it's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, yeah, but it's yeah. it's it's cool to see because you, I like people with radical ideas, and, and maybe in, in your mind they're not so radical. And when you're talking about you okay. know setting up for failure, 
and right. you see all these. It must be so. It must be so cool to have something you really believe in embraced so well, like to have other yeah. people jump on board right away. Yeah, like as I mentioned, I, we're really, really lucky, and I don't know, to be honest with you, how the hell this all happened. And we've gotten a lot of support, you know, especially from like Andrew, um, mm -hmm. Scott, and Pipeburn. They've, you know, supported me, and Andrew's practically my mentor. <laughs> all right, and he's talking about Andrew Jones, and Andrew Andrew Jones right. uh, um, is actually the one who nominated you to be on the show. So yeah, obviously, he thinks a lot is, of you, uh, which is really crazy, man. Which is really, really humbling. <laughs> yeah, he's such a great guy, though. He's he's yeah, just yeah. amazing, and his he, new TV in... show is going to be wonderful too. Yeah, yeah, and he's incredibly generous with his time. You know what I mean? I'm sure he's freaking busy, but he always answers my crazy questions over email. <laughs> Probably. Which is you know, cool, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I and I wish I could develop more, um, you know, connections with guys like that, uh, especially with like Craig, <laughs> right. if you're listening, or Max. <laughs> you know what I mean? These guys are just the best. Well, that's very kind of you to say. I know that they appreciate that. Yeah, um, okay, so people that don't know, because I've done yeah. a lot of research on you, my friend. Um, sure. Tell tell our listeners where some of your uh, uh, where they could see some of the bikes uh, museum wise or, or out right now. Sure. Um, okay, I don't know how to do this either. Let me think about this. Yeah. Uh, first off, we were fortunate enough to be part of the Mad Gallery, okay, in Geneva. Uh, the Mad Gallery is owned by a watch company, a high end watch company called MBNF. Uh, so we're out there in Geneva, and uh, we have another one in their Dubai branch. Okay, um, we have another one in S where is it? Sweden. Sorry. All right. <laughs> hey, it's n it's nice to have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody yeah. listens, like, what a dick! He can't even remember. <laughs> he can't even remember what museum he's at. <laughs> it's a uh, lack of preparation. <laughs> <That's what laughs> Um, I didn't put this in any questions, so he's he's going <laughs> off the fly here. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, so we're there at the MC Collection in Sweden. Um, we have another one at uh, in Alabama. We have a couple actually uh, with the, the Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum. I think is the full name of that. Yeah. We have a few with uh, the Haas Motor Museum in Dallas with uh, okay. Bobby. Um, it was displayed at the Peterson in Los Angeles. Um, cool. But I'm not sure what they did with that because the exhibition is no longer there. Okay. Uh, I know I'm forgetting something, man. Yeah. Uh, two okay. more. Okay. Uh, another one is in Paris at Le Bon Marché and uh, what they call this. It's in a high-end department store. And I've got two pieces in Lane Crawford in Hong Kong. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, it, it, that's it's it. crazy. <laughs> this is this is crazy. Okay, the, because of all the all those that you mentioned, um, oh. I I'm familiar with the Haas very well. Um, mm. How did you, how did you get to meet Bobby? Um, fortunately, he emailed me. Actually, I don't know what they see in our stuff. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I got a call uh, from Bobby telling me that he's interested in one of our pieces, uh, a special one. Uh, it was a Gold Eve. Uh, so that was the very first motorcycle that we sent to him. Wow. Um, yeah, and that's how it all started. And he's, he again, like Andrew, Bobby's just a very, very generous man, mm -hmm. I gotta say, you know, incredibly humble incredibly knowledgeable and i'm not sure if you guys know this but he's actually uh, an author as well and a photographer and i think he used to be an investment <laughs> exactly um so yeah this guy knows everything <laughs> i would say he's an amazing individual an amazing amazing like yeah. the amount of knowledge that man has is, is crazy yeah and um Again, very generous with his time. So um, I used to call him and you know run ideas by him, uh, especially mm -hmm. the business ones. 
and he'd give me his honest feedback. So that's the kind of criticism that I like to, you know, seek. Right. And it's yeah. nice when you have a guy like that, that actually takes the time to answer your questions <laughs> from yeah, a business I, thing. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, He's just a normal guy amazing. too. Yeah, he is just a normal guy. I just don't know, um, what do you call this? How he has time for all of this. <laughs> so that's one of the kind of things I need to learn. And I think that with your guys' passion and everybody I've spoken to and friends that I have, it's funny with the amount yeah. of passion that goes sometimes you just make, you just have the time. And you guys attract each other too. I mean, it's yeah. it's funny to stand on the outside and watch and say, sure. wow, these great minds and all these people with the same passion, no matter what it is, I'm sure across the world, but this whole um, motorcycle, mm -hmm. custom motorcycles and everything, you guys just draw each other in. And right, it's an right, obsession, right. really. You guys are all yeah, sick yeah. in the head. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know who the sickest one is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, sometimes I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, to be honest yeah. with you. It, well, that, that's a good way to live a life. Is it? <laughs> it is. How, okay, so how does your how does your wife feel about all this? Has she been? Have you been with her through this whole process? Um, she wasn't there at the start, but I was fortunate enough to meet her uh, pretty close to the start, and she's been uh, super supportive, man. You know, uh, she's the best. She's uh, everything. I would say. You know what I mean? It's the only reason why Bandit Nine is the way it is because of my wife. You know, that's the only reason we've survived. Right. Well, no, that's great. And you couldn't do something like this without a supportive wife who believes in your craziness. Exactly. Exactly. And um, and I don't know how to put this in a positive way. <laughs> it's going to sound it's going to sound bad. Well, you have prefaced it. Will everybody take this in a positive way? Whatever Daryl says, it's positive. <laughs> yeah. OK. Especially my wife. She's listening. Mm -hmm. But it. it <laughs> It actually puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it kind of puts a lot of pressure on you, and it oh, um, and it propels me to you know it, it's like fuel. So okay. it, it helps me accomplish more. Actually, when I think about her. Right. So pressure to succeed, or pressure to 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 keep things the way they are. That is a really good. Um, pressure to be better, I would say. Well, uh, good people in your life make you rise up. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear it's the same thing with children. I, I don't have any, but, um, you know. Um, I have 17. I would say I have, I, have six, I have six kids with seven different women. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, brother. That's, <laughs> I got magic. Yeah, wow. but it is. <laughs> But it is when you have other people depending on you or other people that believe in you. It, it's it's not like being by yourself. You don't have time to go back on your heels. You got to stay on your toes all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, yeah, my father-in-law even told me like a month ago that you know, uh, with children, you can do anything. Like, he, and he doesn't speak a lot of English. Okay, and he really put it that way. <laughs> right. It's, it's Actually, extremely impressive. Yeah. It is a very when when you have children. Yeah, you you'll understand a lot better. Yeah, yeah it's it, so. it it adds a different kind of responsibility other than taking care of yourself and saying, "Hey, I'm going to move to Saigon and uh, start making these crazy motorcycles, and uh, I hope people like them." But I got a year's money to waste. <laughs> Watch me go back into advertising when I <laughs> right. By the time we launch That's this it, podcast, man. he's going to be back That's sitting it, at the advertising desk. <laughs> so. That's it, man. I saw on your website too. So you you make yeah. you make these bikes and you make a limited amount of them, and you're you're yeah. selling a limited amount of these. So, um, if somebody goes on your website and says, "I love this bike," they can purchase one of like nine or one of six of these certain motorcycles. Correct? That's correct. That's correct. Um, I don't. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was. I, these are fully functional, rideable, everything. If somebody wanted to use it as their everyday rider. Or put it yeah, in yeah, museum. totally. Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want with it. You know, I've got people putting it on the wall, <laughs> adding it to their <laughs> uh, personal collection, um, in their office, uh, and on the road. You know, we've got guys uh, who, you know, on opposite end of the uh, spectrum. You know, we've got struggling college students that have gotten it all the way really? to royal. Yeah. Really? Royalty? Who's got one? 
That I'm not sure I can disclose that one. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we've, it's pretty we've, crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We have some people on here that just disclose everything, and then we oh, yeah. we got we got to pull some stuff down. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're watching yourself today. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't have my whiskey with me, unfortunately. But oh, um, that's what I makes will. the show great. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let. So what are some of your frustrations in the motorcycle industry? Jeez, what are my frustrations? Quite a lot, man. Really? Quite a lot. Yeah. I mean, we, like... both, oh, we, we already talked about, you know, the naysayers and trolls online, which is my biggest. Uh, I'm going to get you a book on how to deal with those guys. Oh, yeah. Cool. I don't, What's it called? I, don't, I don't know what it is. I'll okay. write it for you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. So that's my, my yeah, the biggest one, because honestly, it's incredibly discouraging. And I try my best to ignore that stuff. Um, but man. Yeah, I have, I don't know what, what, what's wrong with me. <laughs> no, and you know what? You seem like a very confident guy. You wouldn't be where you're at without being as confident, you know, as you, as you can be. But yeah, don't worry about them. Yeah, I think yeah, the book's going to, the book I'm going to write for you is going to say how to say fuck you without saying fuck you. Yeah, that's it, man. There, there's another book, the, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yeah, I've read all, I've read that whole series, actually. you read that? Yeah. Is it good? It's it, the, the first half's good. The second half is kind of like, okay, when does redundant become redundant become redundant? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll check yeah. that out. Okay. Yeah. Read the first three um, chapters. You'll be fine. Uh, what's another frustration? The, the other frustration is um, not necessarily the motorcycle industry, but more about the way things work here, mm -hmm. actually in Asia in general. Okay. And I'm not going to be racist or anything. It's just the reality. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Hey, reality is reality. Uh, they have something called uh, saving face. Have you ever heard of this term before? I have. Okay. I don't. Yeah. Maybe they have that in the West. Maybe it's it's not an Asian thing, but it, it's really really awful here, to the point that it becomes um, it slows down productivity like crazy. Okay, and it's basically about people that you know. Um, how would how would I put it? How would you know. put it? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I was going to say elaborate elaborate a little on that. So give me give me an example of saving face. Okay, I'll give you a really easy one. Okay, and okay. it's got nothing to do with motorcycles. Okay, so I was just talking to my cousin over the Christmas um, holidays, and in the Philippines, it's part of the culture on your birthday to kind of you know bring food over at work, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, to say thanks and, you know, hey, hey, it's my birthday. Um, but, you know, he actually has to consider what his bosses think, that he cannot outdo them, <laughs> you know, cannot bring better food than your boss. Wow. This sounds like you're explaining my last marriage. <laughs> you you have to be on pins and needles. Not do, do it right, but don't do it too good. Exactly. Exactly. You're gonna make somebody else feel bad. And and it's something that pops up in most places in Asia, especially in Japan and Korea. That's what I hear. You know, whatever the boss says goes. Uh, you are not allowed to question it. Um, you know, you cannot try to implement new methods that make things more efficiently because if you introduce new ideas it'll make your boss look bad wow well i there, cannot stand that yeah and you know what there's uh in business i think it's funny to to it, because of things like that of trying to trying to come up with an idea that you want to get across but making yeah. it like it's their idea to present to you <laughs> you talk to them enough Jeez, about it where it's that. their idea and then they'll embrace it Otherwise, that you can't do it. Exactly right. That's exactly right. And and the way it, you know, stops me and the company from being productive is people don't own up to their mistakes. Okay. And that is such a problem because we cannot identify where the problems are sometimes. If nobody and, can admit it. That's right. And I have a, a time, you know, controlling things like uh, timelines and things like that, because no matter what I do, 
I can't seem to crack <laughs> this mystery <laughs> at all. You know, I've tried being nice. I've tried being harsh. I've tried being somewhere in the middle. You know, I've tried rewarding them. I've tried reprimanding them. Nothing works. Really? And, you know, I've given them more time to work. They're still late. And it, it's such a mystery. And, I, I, you know, 2020 is when I'm going to freaking figure this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I read, I, uh, speaking of 2020, I just read your post um, that you guys just put out. Uh, I don't know if yeah. it was today or yesterday. Um, that that made me think about a lot of things um, about uh, the last post that, that Daryl put out there was about yeah. asking, going when, when uh, making something, just go to the top of the food chain. And basically yeah. if you don't ask, you don't give anybody the opportunity to say no. That's right. That's right. Um, and it's something I picked up. Um, if you check out the post, it's something that I've been doing for a long, long time. And I, I'm not sure maybe it's a lack of shame, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but no, you know. it's good. It's very good advice for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Fortunately, it's worked for me. And uh, I encourage younger dudes to do the same and just go out there and just ask, you know, and I'm actually, at, at least in the old days, um, we'd pick up the phone and ask, and it's much more effective. And I think it still is just call. <laughs> right. You know? And you know how many especially young people I can't even talk to on the phone that I have to text with them all day, when you can oh, yeah. get this done in one simple phone conversation. Yeah, man. Uh, the I, art I, of verbal communication has gone to shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I also prefer talking on the phone. You know, um, there are so many people that don't get things done because they're trying to text somebody. And, you know, especially when it's urgent. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Right. And uh, the reason I don't like it is actually on the other end is when somebody picks up the phone, at least you could ignore it with a text. They know you, they know you got it. So now you're like, oh, shit, I'm working. I'm trying to get things done here. And you better get back in that certain amount of time or else you're being rude. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We, we've lost the art of communication. That's just, uh, I don't know. So what other – that that that's a very your, – your post is a very good word of advice. But a, a lot of guys that listen to the show are guys that mm -hmm. are up and coming, trying to get noticed, whether – I don't right, care what, right. what, the, what they're building. Um what other words of advice or you have something big that you would tell some of the guys listening out here and how to move forward? Um, geez, that's a good question, man. What advice would I give? I think you mean like starting their own company and stuff, right? Yeah. Or even if they're just, or they're stuck in a rut, you know, doing the same thing. They've been doing this for five or six years, trying to get into a, either accepted to a show or get noticed by someone. Um, getting noticed is um how would i put it something that i know how to do <laughs> because okay. of advertising this right okay um and i would really suggest uh, depending on what it is that you do uh, look for publications that are going to publish your work um, and try to get into the ones that really really matter uh, and that is a long-term game i would say okay. um, so for places like Pikeburn, um, they're really good about um, getting your work up quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, they have lots and lots of followers. Um, right. I totally respect those guys. Yeah, totally. They're amazing. Um, but there are other places as well I would branch out to. So yeah, you know, if you're in motorcycles, you can do those things. But there are other places that you can reach out to, like Forbes or Time or you know, mm -hmm. um, Rob Report. Uh, that will publish your work uh, so that other disciplines, people from other disciplines can see your stuff as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Motorcycles are for everyone. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> and I actually, I, I, I think I found the name of our episode, Motorcycles are for Everyone. Motorcycles are for everyone. That's it. <laughs> I like it. Except if your mom doesn't want you to have one. Wait till you move out. <laughs> In Daryl's case. I'm not sending my mom this podcast. <laughs> mom, love you. <laughs> love I'm, you I'm, not, I'm really trying hard not to swear so i can let her listen to this <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good <laughs> at least we know why you let me yeah. drop the f-bombs we're, 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 we're fine so, so we can send her an edited version right so who do you who do you think has been the most inspiring to you personally either in or outside of the the moto industry to to keep to, to get where you're at today 
That's a good question, too. I, I mean, think, besides mom. I know, mom, you're listening. So besides your mother. Uh, you know what I was actually going to say? I was actually going to say my mom and dad. <laughs> really? Good. See? You know, it's uh, it's a little bit cliche, man. I know, I know. But it's, it's the truth. Okay. Um, they've always been super supportive of what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? And they're from a... They're Asian, and Asian people will know what that means. You know, they're more on the traditional <laughs> end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, my father, um, you know, worked uh, a nine five job, you know, and he did a fantastic job of uh, supporting my mom, and my brother, and me. Um, but I, I really remember this one time when I was about to head to college. I was going to art school, okay, which is already like a big fat mystery for my mom and dad, you know, unconventional. So, but I, I remember my dad, and sorry, let me track back. And art school fees are insanely high. Okay. okay. And so my dad, I remember he talked to me one day and asked me, look, um, we can send you to art school, or I could just give you the cash to start your own company. Wow. <laughs> so, and that's kind of stuck with me for, you know, a really long time, not because of the money, man, but right. because of the, the spirit behind what he said, you know, mm -hmm. like he had confidence uh, in me to do whatever it is that I want to do. and knew that I could achieve what it is that I want to do. Uh, so even though he worked a nine to five job, I'm sure this guy had that entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Um, and it's, something that they've my mom and dad have basically done throughout my entire career even in advertising you know I, I told you i moved from the west to the middle east to the east <laughs> you know and they backed me you know all, all the way through so uh, yeah i can't thank them enough for that you know so if you ask me who really inspires me to do what is what it is that i do it, it's it's really them you know bud and it's not it's not cliche because not everybody has parents like you. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have that in my life, but yeah. you know, not everybody has that and I'm I'm sure there's it it can change I, your entire life just by the two most important people to you in the world yeah, to be your biggest absolutely. supporters. So it it goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, and especially now I feel even more fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, and you know, I'm I'm a big reader of you know the self help things too, and you know, right. a lot of the things you read, some of the most important people in your life, from your wife to your parents to everything, if mm -hmm. if they can hold you back from doing things, people need to find the strength to say, screw it, I'm going for it anyway. Actually, that's something that exists here. Um, I know a lot of uh, kids. Uh, I, let, let's just stick to Saigon, so I can stop saying Asian. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't want you to appear racist on here. But you know, um, what's this called? What was I going to say? There are a lot uh, of kids that are going into university and doing majors that they really don't want to do, and they're only doing it because their parents are making them do it, and that is freaking heartbreaking. It is. <laughs> Every time I see that. It is. They they're they're doing what their parents want them to do, and then they're they're losing their direction at the same time. Exactly, exactly. And um, you know, some people learn to like it, and some don't. And I don't know what happens afterwards, but yeah. And I so, think yeah. people, a lot of people take their work as different things. You see the people that succeed in this world, and those are the guys doing what they want to do, and other people just do their job and make money, and hopefully doing what they want to do outside of work. That's what my book project is about. Precisely. Oh, let's, let's get right to there because oh, right. I know that we're, we're going on. So actually, that's one of the biggest things. That's how your name come up in, in my conversations. Let's talk about Godspeed. Sorry, did I blank out there a second? Hey, man. Sorry. Um, our connection's breaking up. Okay. Can you hear me fine right now? Oh. Okay. That's good. That's good. I'm so okay. sorry. I missed that. Uh, no, that's okay. Two, three sentences. I'll, I'll just edit to there. Dave, note to self. Edit that to. All right. So, Daryl, let's talk about your um, big book project coming up. This is inspiring. Yeah. 
Is it? Uh, to me, well, it do you is. Know so far, do you know anything? Uh, <laughs> you, you know the the only the only be- feedback um, that I've gotten um, the is uh-huh. that you're doing something different and about the builders themselves behind the project. Yeah. Am I on the right track? That's yeah. That, that, that's it, man. That's it. So I. I got this random idea last year, okay? And I've started to gain some momentum, finally. Um, and, you know, I, I really don't like that word self-help because I think all books help, <laughs> right. but fine. It's just for clarity's sake, uh, it's called self-help. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, there are a lot of guys that, you know, just do their nine to five jobs miserable just trying to get make money and you know their dreams are kind of shelved Mm -hmm. which i think is really sad and i don't know if i should be sad (laughs) but i I find it a little bit sad and Mm -hmm. you know for guys like me who are fortunate enough to do you know what they love to do and it's just something that i want to share and teach people how to do so um but there are guys out there that are much better at it than I am. So guys like Craig, Max, you know, Jinya, whoever, even um, journalists uh, like uh, Andrew and Scott or Bobby Haas. I think what I wanted to do was compile, you know, their wisdom into one book. Um, wow. And the way I see it, is that people who ride motorcycles, you know, <laughs> they, for lack of a better phrase, they, they do live life on the edge. You know, motorcycles are incredibly dangerous inherently. You know, why the hell do we do that? We, <laughs> uh, we build custom motorcycles. Um, you know, what? <laughs> is that even a good business plan, you know? Um, But somehow we find a way to make it work. And most of all, we're really happy because we're doing what we love. Mm -hmm. So it's about that. It's about life, death, health, wealth, you know, relationships, um, business and uh, adventure. Excellent. So how many with you with your book? Do you have a idea of how many people that you'd like to feature in there? Yeah, I mean, I have a target of 50. Um, but I do want more. Okay. And the way I see it is it's not a coffee book, coffee table book. Okay. Um, but it's, it's more like a regular book that you read because I I want people to get something out of this people who are in the motorcycle, uh, industry and, uh, but primarily people outside as well. I, I think our motorcycle culture is, you know, is for everyone. (laughs) There it is. Right. And, you know, I'm not a motorcycle guy. And this culture oh, yeah. sucked, sucked me in and, you know, hopefully it doesn't chew me up and spit me out. But um, how, how did you get into it? Oh, my gosh. So I'm just a normal dude that my mother would never let me ride motorcycles. She worked in a <laughs> uh, she was an emergency room nurse. So oh, she would wow. see young kids come in and, you know, die and be mangled oh, no. from. So that was it was never even an option in my house. It was Whoa. never, I was told many times that, you know, that was never going to happen. So Definitely. I think I was uh, probably 40 years old or so. And then I got to be um, friends with Craig Rodsmith. Amazing. And I'm a video guy. And cool. you know, we, bo- we both like vodka. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. So we just, we just started hanging out together and started, started um, enjoying everything. So I told him one day that we should do videos on the yeah. first first day of his build of the the dustbin that he made yeah, um, yeah, yeah actually it was cool. Jan- january 1st i forget what year it was 2015 ish yeah maybe okay. 14 or 15 and you know what just after seeing what he did and just the craftsmanship and the this undying um passion for something mm, and he it. was he and he was broke and it didn't matter and he spent every waking hour at that shop and then I went to shows with him and started meeting people just like him and just the passion and inspiration and things that drive all you guys together. There's so many common threads that 
I don't know. You guys are my people. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, I don't understand who would not be inspired by that story. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, every, every little thing along the way, it's like, yeah. how does all this stuff happen? And, and with seeing everybody that's kind of in the same boat of, you know, chasing a dream, at, at, especially at the shows where I, a lot of talk going on, it's, it's, it's a, a cool thing. Yeah. Now, and, ha- yeah, go ahead. Do you, have you taken a bike to any of these shows? You need to come hang out with us somewhere here. I know. I really, really want to. There are a few things that are stopping me from doing that. Um, the first one is the, um, the distance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very, very hard to plan um, for these shows um, because of the distance and also because of the limited edition shit that I put on myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, um, you know, we're limited to only nine pieces and they're usually sold out uh, quite quickly. And unfortunately, whenever I get invited to these things, we don't have any space left uh, to give one out for the shows. Right. Um, so, yeah. It's a good problem I mean, to have. I mean. I, I, I really want to go. I really, really, really want to go. And what's, I'm trying to think of the other thing that stops me. It, it's also a logistics nightmare. Really? You know? Yeah, it, it's actually quite hard to get a motorcycle into uh, different countries. Um, so, and I, I'm not sure what to do with them after the show. True, because you got to get them there and you got to get them back. That's that's right, and it gets quite expensive. So, for example, getting it to the states alone is maybe about two and a half thousand dollars one way. So, <laughs> I think somebody listening should help Daryl out and say, "I want to buy a bike in the states, and I need it here yeah. by these shows." And he'll give you a two and a half grand discount if you fly him over at the same that's time, it. and he can come hang out. Yeah, Actually, I, I want to. Them. I'll buy one. I'll buy one. Yeah. Let's just sign the contract. <laughs> let's let's go. <laughs> I'm sending you the, uh, the purchase order now. <laughs> Perfect. With a 99 percent discount. That's all I need. Uh, which one's your um, uh, favorite show? <sighs> that's an unfair question. They're they're uh. they're they're all they're all really <laughs> cool for for different reasons. Okay. I think because of the logistics of. Um, of where they are in the United States. I mean, we have one in mm-hmm. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which Milwaukee, cool. Wisconsin people are, t- it, that's Harley City, you know? Right, And right. then you go all the way out to Portland, and it's a totally different, totally mm-hmm. different dynamic. And then you go to Texas. So yeah, yeah. there's there's overlap in the bikes you see, but the whole cultures of everywhere are really a cool, different thing. And all of them have a little something different. So. It, it, is it the same guys uh, that you see everywhere, or what's the no? What s- some of the some of the people I think we see are are the same, um, mm-hmm. but there's a big surgence of uh, I think people from not from the United States. Okay, um, right. which great. is which is cool to see, and it's fun. What you know, you look through Instagram and watch these all year, and then you get through, yeah. and you're like, hey. There's Daryl. Hey, there's uh, there's Max. There's so and so. So, and then people that you've never heard of before. You know that you mm-hmm, walk mm-hmm. in and you see this amazing piece of uh, machinery there, and you're like, "Who the hell is wow. this guy?" Really? So, but there's the thing I like about it is there's no egos, or I've oh, yeah, yet. I'm good. sure that there are egos, but uh-huh. not that not that I associate myself with. Is there a competitive air uh, at these shows? Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I, mm-hmm. Not that I notice. Most of the, most of the guys, the the whole culture that I see there is people bring these things they worked all year on, and they leave mm-hmm. the bike there, and then they go talk about other stuff because mo- <laughs> most people <laughs> they don't want to stand around their bike and talk about it, right? That and sounds you, really fun. <laughs> and another funny thing is to watch by like a show starts on Friday by Sunday. These guys are like drug addicts itching to go back to their shop to be working on their next project. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool, they, man. They miss being in the shop. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I, th- yeah. I think it's inspiring, too, with new ideas or, you know, maybe just getting pumped up with everybody around you to say, God, I got to get back, do something kick ass. Yeah. I, I mean, I see these uh, photos of these festivals and th- there seems to be a lot of people there. Um, I don't know where they come from. <laughs> I... You know, I don't know. I've I just recently had Tor from the one show on, yeah. and I just recently um, had Warren from Mama Tried, and yeah. all these guys. I think they're surprised too that they 
you know, they have this dream to start a show and then they're just completely overwhelmed by the response, which is, oh, which is a great cool, sign. Man. Maybe that, that's something I should do in Saigon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The Saigon show. Yeah. That, that Thanks, would, it sounds like the, the, the paperwork might be a lot. That's all it sounds like. It would oh, be a lot man. of paperwork. <laughs> that's it. I, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Saigon really show is canceled paperwork. already. Yeah. <laughs> So, Daryl, I know because of time constraints, me and you could talk for days on here. I had a ton of different. Uh, um, so I want to make sure that you keep us updated on the on the book project. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And anybody listening, if Daryl contacts you about Godspeed, you better give him every hand hand you can. He's working hard to make you yeah, guys look thanks, good, man. actually. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I hope I can pull it off. <laughs> no. I, hey, man, if you've pulled off the shit that you've already pulled off, you could pull this off. Jeez, I have, uh, wait, maybe I shouldn't say that live. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it was my first book and I have zero experience. <laughs> hey, how much motorcycle building experience did you have? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. so. I guess I can figure it out, thing. huh? Yeah. And then if not, you'll, you, it'll all come together. If you, if you believe in it, it'll all, it'll, it'll all come true. So I need, at the end of all of our shows, we do a, a nomination time of some other people that you would find uh, okay. very interesting to listen to on the show. Uh, no and this thanks. has really helped me Thank gathering other people's because uh -huh. I can, I think of all these guys that I'm like, oh, he'd be cool to have. But then again, I don't okay. know shit about motorcycles. So that's why right. I ask you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, wow, that's a hard one. Oh, or not. It's not. That's a hard one. How many do you need then? Um, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's, I, I usually look for three, but any, any. Look for three. Whoa. A couple, couple one, two would be perfectly fine. Um, we already talked about Bobby, didn't we? And you already got him, right? No, I don't actually. Bobby's just, uh, I've kind of left Bobby I alone. I respect, oh, okay, I respect okay, the man, okay. but he's a great nomination. I can tell you. What do you say? Sure. Shoot big? Yeah, yeah, let's do it, man. I, I just got an email from him <laughs> oh, today, nice. so um, yeah, I can drop him a line if you like. Yeah, uh, make an intro. He's he's a really cool guy. He's incredibly knowledgeable, and yeah, man, I, I just I don't even know where to begin with Bobby because I, I really want to go to his museum and check it out. You uh, have so I'm to. to do that. Yeah. Um, who's some other dude that's good? I would say maybe some Asian dude. I said Asian again. You said Asian, yes. <laughs> this is the Asian show, folks. Amazing. <laughs> Let's just censor that. <laughs> uh, maybe some Asian dudes would be good. Um, I'm just going to put Bobby oh from the Haas Museum and then yeah, Asian dudes. Asian. <laughs> Random you know, Asian uh, dudes. Chromeworks. 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 Have, are you familiar with them? I am it's not. K R O M W O. Sorry, let me do that. K R O M W O R K S. Okay. Uh, the guy that I, I talked to is, uh, his name is Andika, A N D I K A. Okay. And I just got his. Um, so, what I've been doing with Godspeed is I've been sending out a list of 10 questions uh, to 15 mm -hmm. questions um, to get a better understanding of who they are, you know, what their story is. And Andika's story is pretty cool. And his work is just phenomenal. So there are a lot of uh, guys from Indonesia that are just doing some really amazing stuff, man. Like I gotta say, it's surprising and it makes me jealous and angry at the same time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so I think he would be really cool. And he's a really nice guy as well. And very, very generous with his time as well. So cool. uh, maybe shoot him in line. Um, there's another guy. Oh. Um, do you know Shinya Kimura? You know, I just hear how well he's spoken of. Yeah, man. That guy is like, I don't know, the godfather of custom motorcycles, I want to say. Okay. <laughs> His stuff is really cool. And he's probably one of the, the guys I looked up to in the very, very beginning. You know, I, I just love his philosophy. Okay. On bikes. Um, and I, we kind of have a similar way of thinking in the way that um, we find peace in riding, um, even though it's such a violent experience. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, so I think he would be somebody that would, that's really interesting. And the shots of his garage are really cool, too. It just looks like a, a den 
a creative den. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, hopefully I get a chance to see that. Yeah, well, how do you um, how do you find Shinya on Instagram? Do you know? Uh, I think th there's a guy named Menacing Ayu. So Menacing. Okay. A uh, Y U. And, and there are some like underscores there. I don't know how many, but yeah, okay. that's how you so that that's how you get a hold of them. Okay. Um, but yeah, very uh, cool. I think uh, was that three already? Or did I say Bobby? Yeah, you can give okay. me another one. You we got uh, Bobby Chromeworks and Shinya. That's Is that's that a any? that's a powerful three. But if you have somebody else that you think would be really interesting, you're you're on a roll, brother. Am I doubling up with others? I, yeah, I didn't want to double up, man. No, you're not. Um, let me look at my list. Yeah. Um, how about, you know, who's really cool too. And it was just a really nice guy is, uh, Adrian Sellers. Okay. Adrian and, Sellers. Yeah. Adrian Sellers, like seller as in, uh, selling, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's basically, uh, one of the head design dudes at Royal Enfield. Okay. And he's a pretty talented custom guy as well. And. So he's living in the UK, an American fellow. And I got a chance to meet him when we built some stuff for Royal Enfield, but he's just a really nice guy, man. And I think his, cool. his story as well is, is quite amazing. And the way he writes is fantastic. So, um, yeah. Do you know what I, I was just thinking about when you said that, that I think by the time that you get done with this book, I bet you're going to have a thousand other ideas, brother. Because I think it's going to oh be... Oh, my God. <laughs> right. <laughs> You might start working on the book and be so inspired to do other things after hearing these guys' uh, stories. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And and you know, I'm 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 debating whether I should put little teasers on Instagram, you know, because what I really want to do is help people. And I know that sounds pretty lame. <laughs> no, it sounds uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I just I just have this urge to just um, help people and seeing what these guys have written, you know, I feel like I gotta share it right now, you know, right. I just urge to share it right now, and I'm just really thinking about it for a minute just to see if that's the correct move. Um, but yeah, I mean, perhaps I'll start an Instagram uh, about the book soon, and, you know, showcase these guys what they what their philosophies are, what their stories are, and the advice that they would give out to people. See, that's cool. See, me and you are kind of along the same lines, just a different uh, medium. Exactly. exactly. I, do, I use my free time to make a podcast to tell guys stories that I'm inspired by. No, no, you know? no. This was really you know, fun, actually. Do you, know, do you know how hard it is to record three or four podcasts and have to wait? Right now I have four or five podcasts waiting to put out, and I want to just dump them all out because I'm excited <laughs> about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, we got to wait? We just can't oh, throw no. them all what Andrew Jones says, take it easy, buddy. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> He's got a lot Have of good you, advice. I know. Did you listen to Andrew's podcast by any chance? I did. I did. That guy's freaking cool, man. It's annoying. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's too cool to be hanging out. I'm just happy yeah. to call him friend. We, we, yeah, we've been talking for, I don't know, man, five, six, seven years now. And unfortunately, we haven't been in the same country yet. So I, I gotta, I gotta figure something out and meet that guy for real. I owe him a yeah. few beers. Yeah, we need to make all that happen. That's for sure. Uh, all right. Well, because yeah. of time, Daryl, I'm sorry we gotta let you go. No um, worries. But no hey, worries. man, I super appreciate your time. Keep up the badass work, and keep, people you. keep an eye, keep an eye out for Godspeed. The book's gonna come out. It's gonna be fantastic. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, feel free to repost this to tell your friends uh, too. Because and then whatever you get going. Um, let me know because sure. I'm going to repost stuff about your book. And when you get that Instagram site up, let me know. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, this was a really cool experience, man. Yeah. Hey, it was a pleasure. And um, yeah. we're going to see you in the States very soon at a show. So anybody that oh would like God, to sponsor so. Darrow Villanueva's <laughs> PayPal, just send it right over <laughs> right now. <laughs> Blow amazing. it up. <laughs> Blow That's, it up. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. All right. Well, I wish you the best, my friend. And um, same, we'll be talking to you really soon. All right, all right, all right. All the best. Take care. All the best. Thanks, bud.